AFM 94, The Dark. It is that time again. It's time to get to know a band we play here on The Dark. And you're going to get to know this band a lot coming up one month from today on Saturday, September 19th, 7.30, Stonehill Bar and Grill, the third annual End of Summer Bash. On the phone right now, I'm talking with the lead singer of the headlining band, Shallow Side, that being Eric Boatwright. And Eric, thanks so much for joining me once again. How are you doing tonight? I am doing great. I took my mask off. I'm breathing deep. I'm ready to rock. That is awesome. That is awesome. And you know what? We should dive right into this right away before we get into the end of Summer Bash and things, uh, what's happening with Shallow Side. But let's, let's talk about the pandemic and how it has really just put a strangle here uh, on the entire country, the entire world. But also in the music industry, it's pretty much crippled it, hasn't it? It is absolutely crippled everybody, you know, from the very top to the very, very bottom. I could not imagine wanting to start a band, like finally finding the right elements to put the band together and put those to put your, your craft on stage. And then... Uh, Every all the governments around the world just says no. Sit down, shut up. You're not allowed to do anything. I couldn't imagine being in that world. However, being in in an established band, it's not much better because we're our craft has been ready for the stage, and we've been told to sit down and shut up. Well, it's aggravating. It's extremely uh, difficult, and one of the worst things I think uh, the music industry is having to face it as far as an, an artist standpoint. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a devastating thing because we're not allowed to release stuff either. So, um, it's, it doesn't matter what genre you're into, you know, particularly, I love some rock and roll music. Um, but some people, you know, they get into pop music, country music, uh, soul music, you know, whatever you're into, that's also been told to sit down and shut up as well. So like, uh, for, for me, music has saved me more times than I can count, and now I've, I'm being told that that drug is no longer available. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. And I tell you what, over the last four months, I have talked to numerous artists, whether it be small bands or bands that have been around for 20, 30 years that are major bands that fill stadiums. And, you know, the one thing that I didn't really think about is, you know, obviously you guys on stage – are the main act you're up there performing in front of everybody and it's affecting you but it's also affecting all the people that make the shows happen and that's the the roadies the techs the every all the production the stage people and then of course you go to the venues and all that stuff and i never really thought about the guys kind of that make you guys shine and that's really hurting them too isn't it absolutely man the the the, the people behind the scenes, um, and, and you can ask any artist, they'll, they'll say the same thing. That's where the real rock stars, you know, they, they, they lie in wait. They, they're, they're hungry. And um, those, those people are literally the, um, the, the genius, you know, behind the craft. They, they create, develop, and get the least amount of respect um, as far as where the limelight shines. And uh, the, the, those people have been out of work and without a voice. You know, that's, that, that's like I was saying a minute ago, one of the scariest things is to be an, an, an artist and not being able to express yourself. It's, it's terrifying. But what if the only way that you're literally able to express yourself um, was buying, by allowing that artist to express himself? Now, he doesn't have a voice, and you, you've never had that voice because that was your voice. You know, right. it's been taken away from a lot of people and, and it moves all, all into the, you know, the bar owners, the, the, the venue owners, the, um, the bartenders. So those people, you know, it's, it's, it's been, it's been devastating from, from the top to the bottom, but I believe we're getting to a better state. At least my mentality is there. I'm, I'm willing to look towards the positive and, and hope for a better day, you know, tomorrow at least. We're talking with Eric Boatwright. He's the lead singer of Shallow Side. Shallow Side is coming to our third annual End of Summer Bash 
right on September. It's a Saturday, September 19th at the Stonehill Bar and Grill, three miles west of Randall. And uh, we're looking forward to you guys playing there. Uh, we'll chat about that in a few more minutes. But I guess, what have you been doing? What has Shallowside been doing uh, during the pandemic right now? Uh, mostly we've, we've been working on our TikTok dances. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're, try, we're trying to get the um, I'll go ahead and say this. Keith, our drummer, incredible dancer. I had no clue. I had no clue. It, it's uncomfortable because he doesn't like to wear underwear, and he wears gray sweatpants a lot. So it's very, um, very uh, informal. You know, we we like to be respectable gentlemen, uh, at least for the, the most part of the band. Keith is a different wild card, uh, but man, incredible dancer. Blew my mind. We've been um, we t- we took some time to write. We took some time to, to jam. We learned some uh, some new acoustic songs. We put out. Uh, an acoustic cover of Turn the Page um, by Bob Seger, yeah. uh, legendary Bob Seger. Uh, a huge fan of that of that guy. Um, we, we've got to dive in and learn a, a deeper form of our own personal craft. You know, like I, I um, finally took the time that I, that I needed and um, jumped in on some vocal lessons. I, I, I learned some different techniques, um, started learning more on the piano, more on the guitar. Uh, the, the guys in the band, they also took time, you know, personally to, to hone their craft, which um, at, at all at all fails, when everything else fails, we can all just revert back to that, you know, 12 and 13 year old boys that, uh, that we used to be, run inside of our bedroom, close the door, and crank that guitar all the way to the ceiling and just rock out. You know, close them eyes and just pretend <laughs> that you're in you're in that uh, that that packed stadium all over again. I've uh, used the analogy with a lot of the uh, artists that I've talked to is uh, you artists have to be just caged animals right now, just ready to be let the cage open and loose and get out there. And I'm assuming uh, you're ready for some uh, live shows, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know um, when. When the rock star was, uh, I guess, came to light. When when the uh, your your idealistic rock star, 1970s, 1980s, it was just sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, when I started touring, uh, the rock star was in his green room on his iPad, FaceTiming his family, um, you know, d- uh, doing VIP meet and greets of that were a very formal event and that's where uh we left off in the touring market i cannot imagine the human element that we are going to play into when we're allowed to get back into the realm of touring and rock and roll i i can only imagine that um uh, Mick Jagger would eat his heart out he would be terrified Elton John would be absolutely horrified to find the debauchery that is going to happen um, maybe even uh, as early as uh, 2021 uh, for, for uh, the quote-unquote rock stars of the industry. Yeah. I, I, I could not imagine uh, what, what's going to happen when, when the cage is finally open and the animals are allowed to be released. And what's your take, I guess, you know, because there's been some stuff that's come out with Live Nation and that and the guarantees uh, from, you know, it used to be for bands going down, the percentage of, you know, how much you get paid going down. You know, I, I guess what's your kind of take on that, especially for, for an artist that's now been around a little bit and you've established yourself, it's almost like you have to start over again. Do you feel that way or how do you think this is going to all play out eventually when uh, you are able to do a lot more live shows and do tours? Um, you know, I think, I, I feel within my heart of hearts that live music is going to take on a brand new life. Um, and, and it, it's not necessarily going to be in the, the rock genre. I believe there's going to be a lot more that, that's going to open up. Something that was very interesting happened in the music industry recently that I didn't expect was everyone started performing live right there on screen you know whether your, your phone screen your computer screen uh so so that really put the control into the artist's hand and took the uh third party ticket 
seller out of the element, I, right. I thought and was absolutely blown away. I was like, wow, this. Like, you, you really can't stop an artist from being creative. So, you know, wherever the roadblocks come, wherever uh, there's a, a new avenue that's going to be created, someone's going to figure out how to make a, a, a sneaky little dollar uh, here and there. And and that's fun. You know, we all got to eat. Uh, in order to move forward, we got to be smarter. In order to be smarter, you know, we just got to work harder sometimes. And that's that's just how it's it's going to go as as far as uh, Live Nation and stuff. You know, they they've really pushed the ballot on, on what could be, what should be, and a lot of people push back on what they think should be and could be. And I, I think it's just going to be. Uh, an element of working together and see what fits best for for everyone. Yeah, yeah, and I think that I think you hit the nail right on the head. You you have to work together. We're all in this together. Everybody has lost a, a lot of revenue in this, and uh, and and fortunately, not only in the revenue side, uh, we've lost just time of our life just uh, dealing with this in the last you know three four months. I don't think people realize that. You know, you look at the the money thing. You, the money thing is you know it's something that's there, but. Think about all the time that has been lost uh, in the last three, four months of just not doing things that you normally would do in your life. Man, it's it's so true. You know, um, something's very terrifying for the uh, for me. I, I would give you a little uh, quick story about Shallow Side. We put out three EPs, and then finally went into the studio to record a full length, solid album. Our first. And uh, we released it. Six months later, everyone's told to sit down. We're not allowed to move. We have literally not toured off of our debut album. Yeah. Is it, and that, that's Saints and Sinners? Is that what it is? Yeah, Saints and Sinners. Yeah. I mean, we just have not been able to tour and, and play these songs live enough. Right. And the cycle, the, the element of... Uh, surprise or, or you know the, the the longevity of those songs I mean typically you'll see artists you know create an album two and three years later they'll create another album so so here we are at the typical time frame to start recording and, and writing uh, album number two and we haven't even started the live aspect cycle of album number one it's Right, that's weird. It's just a strange. It's strange, and it's man. I I really wanted to perform these songs live. I I love this. You know, I love what we created. I love what we came out with, and how we were able to really dig deep within ourselves and, and reach for a common goal. And it came out incredible. We recorded it with uh, Elvis Basquiat in Orlando, yeah. and the album came out absolutely mind blowing for me. And <clears throat> not able to capitalize on, on that at all. Well, I tell you what, though, in uh, one month from tonight, you can play that whole album if you'd like uh, at the I'm, show. I'm pulling out the stops, man. I am pulling out the stops. I'm, we, we might even just go full-blown with it. There's no telling. I think you should. I mean, uh, the, the the only song that I've heard off it that you've actually, I think, released to radio was Sound the Alarm. Is that right? That's right. That was our first single. And, I, and and actually, I think if I remember right, it didn't do too bad on some of the charts. The foundations charts, I think it reached uh, maybe even the top uh, thirty or something. It did great. It did great. I, um, it's it's a it's a big it's a big hit. It's a big number um, for the album, and uh, we were kind of stuck on on the whole thing. We had uh, three or four singles that were going to roll out, you know, back to back off these things, and uh, just, the world just got really really strange for us. So let me ask you that then. When when is the the next time or chance to start releasing? Now that you're going to go out and do some live shows in the next uh, you know a couple of weekends here, is that maybe now you, you know we're into September here? Then is is that when you maybe start putting some of this out? Or are you going to wait to 2021 to do that? Uh it's a it's a toss up right now. You know we we've been working behind the scenes. We've got a couple of music videos sitting in our pocket that were that were ready to release. Um, we did some. Some more work with our our boys at uh, Red Thirteen Media up in uh, Boston, and uh, we we got some 
good stuff, and we're just waiting on the world to open back up so we can get to running again. Right, right. Hey, last time we talked was about four years ago. Rebel had just hit the top 50. So uh, you've had some songs in between that and probably your your biggest song, at least uh, on uh, rock radio in the top 40, was Can You Hear Me? Uh, that that was a big hit for you, wasn't it? Yes, that was that was great. I mean, that we, we that was a an awesome EP that we recorded, you know, again with uh, with Red Thirteen, and uh, it's the album or that that EP turned out great. It, we had a lot of fun uh, producing it, putting that thing out, uh, and it was well received. And, of course, I'm assuming we'll hear that uh, coming up in a month from now at the end of Summer Bash. The third annual end of Summer Bash coming up again on Saturday, September 19th. And that'll be at the Stonehill Bar and Grill, three miles west of Randall. And, of course, Shallow Side going to be there. Uh, I think you've played with Strange Days before. You know those guys? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome dudes. We've, we've played with them, I think, um, I think on a, a couple occasions. So there'll be uh, there'll be direct support for you, and then uh, the opening band is a band out of Minneapolis called Sin Seven, and they've kind of uh, been an up and coming too. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. I believe I have heard of them before. Okay, but anyway, it should it's be going to be a good night of rock and roll. I tell you that. Absolutely, it should be a jam packed uh, three op three plus hours of rock and roll. Should be a lot of fun. So what is, I guess for the listeners and the the, the people that are attending the show coming up in a month. What should they expect uh, for a shallow side show? Uh, relief. <laughs> you know, like, let's just sum it up into one word, relief. I mean, we're, we're, we're all going to get there, and uh, there's probably going to be some germs in the air. We're going to take a deep breath, and we're just going to look around and be like, hey, we're living. We're breathing. We're humans. We're in this together. Let's play some rock and roll music. I think what we can expect wholeheartedly is to finally have a good time as a community, as, as people, and, and hopefully those goals are reached. Well, I tell you what, Eric, you're going to get some very clean Minnesota air at this location. I mean, it is in a beautiful setting, kind of on a little bit of a hill. Uh, there's some farm fields around. It, it's just a perfect setting. Uh, have a great stage, great production, and then three great bands playing, and a lot of hungry fans. That's the other thing, a lot of hungry fans to see a live show again. I think that's uh, going to be a huge thing that, coming up in a month. Excited about it, man. We've we got a whole buffet of rock and roll music ready. Hey, i got to ask you one question. When we talked about four years ago, I asked uh, you which bands you would love to play with, and uh, at that time uh, you had said you'd love to have a chance to play with Shinedown. Have you ever had that chance yet to play with Shinedown yet? Uh, no, not the full band of Shinedown. We have not. Um, we have not been able to play with them. At that. Okay, not yet, but it's still the. Not- Hey, 2021 is going to be the year of, I think, a lot of weird things and crazy things happen. So maybe that's your year that it'll happen. I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping that, that that and a lot more is to come for 2021. Absolutely. All right, we got, we got to get going here. But uh, before we get going, how about one last shout-out to uh, our listeners and future attendees at our show coming up here on September 19th, the end of Summer Bash. What do you want to say to everybody and make sure they come out and see Shallow Side? Swing by the YouTubes and the, and the social medias. Check out the songs, learn them. And when you come to the show, let's sing them together. It's going to be a great time. I'm excited to see everybody. Uh, long live rock and roll. That's awesome. Eric, thanks so much for joining me. And you know what? Since uh, you did the uh, cover of uh, Bob Seger's Turn the Page, we're going to play that right now. I think it's a great rendition, and hopefully uh, we hear that coming up in a month, too, at the end of Summer Bash. Let's do it, man. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, We will see you in a month. Sounds good? Let's do it. Once again, don't forget, third annual End of Summer Bash presented by The Dark here on FM 94 and Stonehill Bar and Grill. 7.30 7.30 start. Eric and the guys from Shallow Side are the headliners. Strange days since 7. All the details, of course, coming up here in just a moment. And also on our Facebook page, The Dark on FM 94. And here it is. It's Turn the Page, Shallow Side. It's on The Dark. It's on FM 94.